Have you ever looked inside a Snap-on impact wrench? Well, come on back and we'll take a look. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. We've had the Snap-on CT9010 impact wrench in the shop for a few weeks now, and we've compared it against a couple of other impact wrenches, and quite frankly, it's done very poorly. Now, this is their brand new 3 8 inch brushless impact wrench, runs on their 18-volt platform, and it just really doesn't do that well. So we thought, you know what? Let's take this thing apart. Let's look inside, see what the impact mechanism looks like, and see why maybe it performs so poorly. Again, for a $900 tool, shouldn't it do pretty well? Shouldn't it be able to beat the pants off of most other competitors in the industry? Also, shouldn't it be able to beat a 12-volt tool? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so this is the CT9010 from Snap-on. It's their 3 8 brushless impact. We, have, uh, we haven't reviewed it per se, but we have compared it against some other tools. It does run on their 18 volt platform. By the way, their battery kind of looks like a big Lego. Um, does seem to have some decent protection on it. It's nice and uh, rubber, rubber over mold here. It feels pretty thick, uh, so it's got a nice grip on here. Uh, so it does feel decent, it just looks yeah, not great. And I can't stand their battery button here. It's really hard to push, real tiny. Um, and the same with their, they're like blister buttons uh, here on the back for their speed control. It's pretty hard to hit as well. Uh, and maybe it lasts a long time, I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look inside this thing because it really doesn't perform that, that well at all. Um, Milwaukee's 12 volt tool, the stubby beat it. Um, so let's, let's have a look inside of here and see if we can't see something. Okay, pretty tif typical anvil system here. Now, so I'll give it that. So they have a needle bearing here in the nose cone, uh, which I have not seen in other impacts, other battery powered impacts. So I'm glad to see something that's definitely kind of stand apart um, when you pull most of these other impacts ap apart, you typically either see a bushing or nothing at all. So uh, that roller bearing there, that's, that's nice to see. Obviously, that's going to have some longevity. Uh, it's going to last quite a long time and not wear out. Can't tell. That looks like a... Yep, that's a, that's a washer that I can probably get out of there. Yep. There we go. Ah, there we go. So yeah, looks like some kind of uh, hardened washer there um, for wear protection, because that's where this is riding on. It's riding like this. And that's your anvil that's doing all your hammering. Dece looks to be a decent size as well. I'm not a metallurgist, so I can't tell you what type of, uh, of metal this, here, this is or steel. Um, uh, but it's definitely not aluminum, I can tell you that. Obviously, that'd be wearing out quickly. Uh, okay, so now let's take a look at the hammering mechanism. So this is the part here that does all your hammering uh, or your impacting, if you will. And it looks like that maybe that's not going to come out of there. And there's planetaries down there. Yep, oh, there it goes. So here you've got a set of planetary gears. And if you don't know what planetaries are, they work a lot like a transmission. Well, not a lot like a transmission. Uh, in your automatic transmissions, you have planetary gears. And what this allows us to do is you can basically turn up the power uh, by, you know, limiting the amount of revolution. So in other words, it might be turning 2000 RPMs out here, but then the anvil may only be turning 500 RPM. So you can apply a lot more torque to this than, uh, than just speed. So you can turn speed into power and vice versa. Uh, you can take torque and turn it into uh, you know, miles per hour, if you will, in a, uh, uh, in a transmission. Got an O-ring here, so that's sealing there in the mechanism, which obviously probably leads down to the brushless motor. Uh, you have a roller bearing there as well. So you see a roller bearing in there. And then there's your outside ring to these planetary gears uh, where this rides here. Um, so. Looks like this shaft turns these gears, which then turns it on this planetary ring gear, which then turns this whole mechanism, this outer mechanism here. So the inside's turning at a different rate than this outside. Um, 
and I forgot the actual RPMs on this tool. Uh, I think a couple of thousand if I'm not mistaking. So that inside motor is obviously turning a lot more. Uh, the impact mechanism looks pretty common to a lot of others. Uh, you have a spring here. So at what happens here is as this is riding along here and as these, uh, this is called like a dog clutch. Um, and as these dogs collide here, obviously it's applying hammering force to this anvil. And so as it hits that anvil, it overcomes the force to either spin that nut off or that fastener off or to tighten it. And if it can't spin any longer, then it, it basically overcomes that obstacle there and compresses this spring because this anvil is kind of fixed as far as uh, the, the lateral movement, if you will. And so as it collides, it jumps over the top by compressing that spring and then goes over and hits again. Um, this is a pretty heavy weight. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and weigh this. So first we'll weigh uh, pounds and ounces. Make sure we're zeroed out. There we go. And so you're at uh, three quarters of a pound, what, what, 12 ounces there? Or that's almost 75%. That's yeah, three quarters of a pound. So that's definitely a decent size impacting uh, mechanism, if you will. Uh, you've got a nice thick steel here. Um, nice, uh, pretty heavy duty spring. I'm just surprised that it doesn't hit harder than it does because it, it hits almost like an impact driver rather than an impact wrench. I mean, there's a big difference when this thing hits compared to a Milwaukee or a Makita or any other, you know, mid torque or even compact uh, impact wrenches. Um, let's weigh the anvil here. 2.7 ounces, um, so that's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, let's switch over to grams here. There we go, so 75 grams, and the impact mechanism, 335 grams. I'm curious, I'm gonna take apart uh, somebody else's and let's just compare these two, if you will. So the, uh, the actual M12 stubby actually beat this thing in a shootout. So uh, let's take it apart and, uh, and see what we find in here. See if we can find a difference between Yeah, I had to get a T10 here and I think uh, this case has got to come apart. Amazing how well this uh, this little impact does, as small as it is. There's your brushless motor. There's your circuit board, or a lot of it. And then, uh, of course, your trigger here. And that's just amazing to me that all that happens right there. And they're developing that much power in here. So then here's our impacting mechanism, which I don't know that we're going to be able to get into. I mentioned, uh, like the snap-on, it definitely had a roller bearing in it, uh, in, the, in the cone, in the nose cone. This one is not, it's just got a bushing. I, I'm not knocking this, but you have to look at why is there such a price, a huge price difference. Um, so bushing in here, which is what I expected, uh, but nothing that concerns me, if you will. Uh, and then here's your impacting mechanism, which a little different setup. You see this still the same uh, idea of a planetary set except for rather than three planetary gears, you've just got uh, two gears here, uh, but still you get that same planetary action, if you will, where basically you have a motor that spins on the inside and turns that inside gear, and therefore then spins that outside at a different rate of speed. Uh, again, developing torque, rather, um, uh, developing torque, creating power from, from RPMs. In other words, almost like horsepower to torque, if you will, even though it doesn't work that way. Torque is horse, 
torque creates horsepower. Regardless, um, the impact mechanism, uh, this seems about as heavy. What was the other one? Um, 335 or something as far as grams go. So let's weigh this one. 270. So this is lighter, but yet it hits harder. I, I really, I don't understand that. I think RPMs were about the same. I don't remember, but yeah, this is 335 grams. This is 270 grams. Um, this anvil is 75 grams. This anvil 55 grams. So you've got a complete lighter uh, impacting mechanism as a whole, and yet it's still hitting harder. You also have a less impacting area. So you see the area here where this is impacting, a little bit different setup, almost like a, uh, um, like an oval or a, uh, what would you, an elliptical type of style rather than a squared off dog. Uh, but same idea, uh, the dogs, they collide and then it overcomes the spring here and compresses this. Here, I'll show you. See how, how I can com compress that spring. That may be it right there. That spring seems to be a lot heavier tension uh, than that one. I'll, I'll check it here and again in a moment. Um, I don't have a way to measure that right this second, but maybe I can rig up something. We'll start measuring that. But anyway, so the dogs work the same way, even though they're shaped a little different. As it hits and overcomes the force of, of either, you know, if it, if it can't overcome the force to tighten or loosen that fastener, then it overcomes that spring's force it jumps over the top of this anvil and then engages once again and hits. So when you hear it going that, 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 and hit over and over and over, that's what it's doing. It's hitting here, jumping over, hitting here, jumping over. But again, the anvil's not actually moving. This counterweight is actually moving, compressing that spring, and that spring's pushing it back down to engage in the next slot and hit that anvil one more time. I'm confused. I really am that, that Number one, that Milwaukee is developing this much power out of this little stubby impact. Number two, I expected to pull out of here something that looked like an impact driver mechanism uh, that's not near as heavy duty. So I don't understand unless purely Snap-on is toning this thing down to not hit as hard as it can. Uh, I'm not that much of an electronic wizard. I like seeing the roller bearing, by the way. But otherwise, I really don't understand why they're not doing more as far as power goes. couldn't do that didn't you while we're this far we might as well pull it pull it all the way apart right let's uh, have a look here nine hundred dollars sitting here a little bit scary not really oh Where's AV when I need them? Uh, PA6, 30 GF, I don't know. Some sort of glass reinforced fiber. Um, I think the 30 GF is 30% is, uh, glass fiber. Hey, hey I'm learning something. Uh, anyway, uh, that is a pretty bright LED light, by the way. Let me see if I can get it back in there. There we go. Um, and here's the brushless motor and the... Uh, 
the setup, the inside of the um, of the mechanism of the gear mechanism. Again, I I mean, see some decent, you know, water protection. It looks like, you know, here with the uh, the poured resin electronics, if you will. Looks like a port right there that they could either tune or pull data off of. Uh, I'm assuming. So definitely you know, quality built by, by all means. Um, I just don't understand why it suffers so bad in performance. Yeah, I don't know that I want to go any further. I do want it to still work, um, but you know, definitely a nice looking you know, brushless motor cage there. Looks like the term actuator on the back. But anyway, so a well quality built tool, but again, I don't see the reasoning for the $900 price tag. I see a roller bearing, see some decently, uh, you know, uh, covered electronics, but if your performance is not going to be there to meet your quality uh, engineering, if you will, I, I don't know where you're, where you're, you know, demanding the price from. <music> you were thinking you were thinking there's no way he's going to get that back together and it's going to work again well i'm proving you wrong by the way i surprise myself sometimes anyway we're just really intrigued on why snap-on would do this why would you come out with a tool number one that's the highest price in the industry it'd be a brand new tool and it still not be able to keep up with a lot of the compact tools in the industry when you should be the market leader. Now, were there some quality components in here? Absolutely, loved seeing the roller bearing in the nose cone. That's gonna last a long time, probably a lifetime. Uh, otherwise, I mean, yes, the electronics look decent, but again, you're talking about sometimes three times the amount of money. And why aren't you, the biggest thing is, so aside from the money, let's say you could uh, explain the value. Um, why not the power? Why aren't you laying the power down? Well, let me explain that I think I've found it, but I don't know. So the Milwaukee stubby, the M12 stubby, the 12 volt impact wrench turns 2,700 RPMs and delivers 3,200 impacts per minute. Now we saw that was a smaller anvil, both the anvil and the counterweight or the dogs or whatever you wanted to call that. Uh, the whole impacting mechanism was lighter than the snap-on. So you got a heavier duty uh, impact uh, mechanism in the snap-on. However, the RPMs are only 1700 RPMs, a little less than that, or 1800 RPMs. I think it's like 1775. And the impacts per minute are like 2575. So 2600 versus 3200 on the Milwaukee. As far as speed goes, like 1800 versus 2700 on the Milwaukee. Or, uh, uh, yeah, whatever it was on the Milwaukee. So I, I just don't understand. Do they intentionally have it detuned? That's the only thing I can think of is they literally have this tool detuned for maybe longevity. So they don't ever have to warranty it. That'll last a lifetime. Maybe. I'm not sure. That's the insides of the CT9010. Let me know what you think about this impact wrench. Hey, if you don't mind, would you hit the like and subscribe button if you like this video? By all means, if you didn't like this video, give us that thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.